Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Mushoku Tensei season 2 episode number 5. Okay, the previous episode we had a slice of life type of an episode where um, Aries and uh, two new of her friends, uh, Toa and the other girl, I don't think they mentioned her name. Uh, both of them, like, you know, they became friends. They were like playing just like how, like, you know, children their age kind of plays. And it was nice to see her actually interacting with uh, characters her own age. Rudy can be called her age, but technically he is like, you know, an adult. So, like, you know, that's why I don't count it in that way. Uh, but like you know like who, whose mental age people whose mental age are the same as her it was nice to actually see her interacting with them playing and like, you know bring stuff together and having a good time they i think they stayed there for three months yeah until the uh, rain stopped and that's how like, you know they had like a uh, time to kind of rest and uh, like you know like make new friendships and have a good time aries and at the, at the same time, we got some more information about Ghislaine, her past, and how she is related to these people. Um, and we saw, like, you know, her brother, like, you know, how uh, Toa's dad, uh, how he, like, you know, had, like, kind of, like, had not a wrong impression, but according to him, Ghislaine was this rowdy kid who just destroyed everything and like you know like he now regrets not talking to her and like you know seeing Tua also going kind of through the similar thing where she also like you know just does not want Ares to go away but at the same time she was angry at Ares and was not talking to her so the dad came and told her that do you want to regret this day forever just like how I do and you know like they made up and yeah and then in the end we kind of got a little bit of a mock battle where Ares loses like you know they kind of clash swords and i guess from clashing swords ace was able to realize that yeah uh toa's dad is a lot a lot stronger than him I, I think her name was toa wasn't or i'm mistaking it for i might be mistaken i'm sorry if i'm uh like you know like mistaken i've mistaken her name uh but yeah and yeah that was that they set out on their journey geese joins in and then in the end there was a little conversation about the different gods like you know like the the, the techniques of the different uh uh different uh you know the, the different sword techniques and everything and the people who are strongest in them and rudy was like you know what i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to meet these people it'll be a big problem because they'll they're definitely stronger than rejet Guess what? I guess um, animals love to do this thing, you know, like bring up like flags and like, you know, like and then whatever the character says that they don't want it to happen is going to happen eventually. So let's see if that actually happens. If Rudy actually meets characters who are even stronger than Rujit. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. This is episode number five of Mushoku Tensei season two. I'll be putting in the subtitles and timer here. Sync it to whichever is your preference. And let's get started. All right, so here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Hmm. Oh, damn, this is like a. Oh, this is such a cool landscape, you know, like. Oh, is this the. No, I don't think so. Like, you know, they said that the someone who slashed the road in half or something, like, slashed the forest into two. So, yeah, anyways. Hmm. Wow. This, looking at this anime really makes me want to play an RPG, JRPG, you know? Where you just wander around going on adventures to different places. Militio. Wait, I thought you were going to join us. Okay. <coughs> she wants to eat good food and also wants to feed Rudy. <laughs> Good. 
I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will. That's. Adventure is good. Why? Okay, I guess. Hmm. Wait, a new, a new song. What? A new opening. Wow, the songs are really great. Like, I really like the first opening as well. Or is it the same one? Damn, look at this place. Oh my god. Oof. This place is beautiful. Oh my god, just look at the designs of the buildings. The architecture and everything. Wow. Wow, this place is amazing. Just looking at the scenery and everything. You know, it's like water and then... Look at this. Oh my god, this is so pretty. Damn, this is one of the best visually best looking uh, cities I've ever seen. Alright. Strategy meeting. <laughs> uh, okay. Year and a half. Oh, this is human territory. Okay. Yeah, we need money. <laughs> too realistic. This this anime is too realistic. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Seasickness. Okay. Oh, figurines. Oh, okay. Interesting. Won't they get scared? I don't think so. <laughs> what? Hopefully it works. And that's why he was making them. Mass produce. Wait, how do you even mass produce in this world? Like... Okay. Uh, oh wait, yeah, he doesn't know that... They are also trying to goblin slay. Come on, don't. Oh my god. We've got enough trauma from goblin slayer. Not anymore. I don't want that. Um yeah no how about no <laughs> he, he doesn't understand anything he's like what is this kid even doing <laughs> okay Hmm. <laughs> but damn, yeah. Oh no, someone's getting kidnapped. What the hell? Wow. It is a big town.
Uh, never abandon a child. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, yeah, he's he's going to save that person. That kidnapped person because there you go. Is that a kid? I don't think. Okay. Oh boy. What's happening here? What the? Wait, he's asking him, are you okay? Like, I don't think that's what kidnappers do. What the? Church. Um. What the? Rudy. Oh, great. Great. Eh! Oh, trap. Yeah, it's a trap. I don't think these are kidnappers. Who are they? Like, this is asking the guy, like, are you okay? Great. Ah! I don't think that's Ha huh. Sunrise attack Wow I don't think this guy's a Who? What the? I don't think this is a Oh, it, it. <laughs> oh my god, Rudy! Okay, great. You're in the middle of a fight, Rudy. Oh yeah, she has a foresight. <laughs> I can't look. <laughs> great. Wait, it's Paul! What the? No, no, that's Paul's, Paul's voice! I, I, I know that voice. What is he doing here? Oh yeah, he's been one year, so I... I... That's your dad, Rudy. I can recognize her, him from his voice. You can't... I guess he hasn't heard his voice for like a year, so... Oh boy! It is Paul. Damn, he got a uh, buff, I think. Oh boy, let's see how much Rudy has improved. He has a foresight now. Come on! Yeah! There you go, that's... That's Paul. Come on, recognize your son. Ah, there you go. Okay, there you go. Oh my god, look at him. Wow, I was not expecting him suddenly popping up like this. Like, you know, Paul. He was just writing a letter and then suddenly he pops up. 
Okay, so what is he doing here? Like, these are his people and... <laughs> oh, great. Okay, so what's going on? Why, why is, what's his condition like this? And where's Zenith? No, he has not. I don't, yeah. Roxy read it. <sighs> well, the huge story. <laughs> My kinder spirit. All right, he's explaining everything. What's up with Paul? Everyone's listening to him. Yeah. Whoa. Come on, Paul. Oh my God. What? Were you listening? Yeah. Well, he's trying to go back home, like... Well, how, like, I don't think Rudy would realize that, it's, like, but, you know, like, everyone got teleported. All right, Paul, you're, you're being petty now. <sighs> okay, something must have happened to Paul. What is happening? Okay, he's going too far now. Okay, this is... Yeah, the, like I think, the, okay, Rudy doesn't know that. Okay, Rudy, you're also going too far now. What? Yes, come on, oh my God. Oh! Oh. Yeah, like what what is wrong with Paul? Like he should actually 
But uh, I don't blame him. Uh, uh. Oh, great ball! Ball! Oh my god! Uh. Wait, who the? Oh, is this? Oh, is this? What's her name? I forgot. Norn, yeah. Oh, God, what the hell is... Okay. Like, like, I think this is, like, you know, like, this whole situation, Rudy is at fault as well, but the biggest one at fault here is Paul. Like, I can't blame him because he's been going through a lot, but that doesn't mean he, like, you know, he, he, he could do this to Rudy. Like, what the hell was that way of... Okay, anyways, I'll talk about it later. <clears throat> yeah, like... Like, tell that before, like, why did he... <sighs> he was not thinking of the worst possible situation because he did not want to, you know... Yeah. I think so. Well, how would he know that? What is... Oh my god, Paul! Okay, I don't think he was kidnapping. Oh, okay, that's why. Yeah. Oh. That good. Oh my god. Like, I understand what he's saying, but I think Paul actually... Uh... <sighs> oh boy. I don't think so. Whoa, what happened? Oh my god. Yeah, calm down. <laughs> like, uh, I'll, I'll talk about the whole situation with Paul after this uh, episode ends. 
there's quite a few things I want to talk about here. Like the whole situation is really weird, but at the same time, I don't think the thing that Paul did was actually correct. <laughs> <sighs> okay, that's it. Now, here's the thing. Looking at it from Paul's perspective, I understand why he is so mad at Rudy. I understand. Like, he's gone through a lot. The whole situation is kind of eating him of not being able to find Zenith and I think Lilia was the name of the that other 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 girl uh, the maid girl I forgot her name I think it was Lilia yeah. yeah Zenith and Lilia unable to find them is kind of eating at him and like you know not knowing where they are and he actually thought that okay you know what Rudy is somewhere out there um, after getting my message he will be able to understand what's happening and he'll work like you know like start walking on his own and try to find them as well now and then suddenly coming here and like no suddenly meeting rudy and like you know listening to him kind of like you know laugh and talk about the whole situation while he everything has been eating him from the inside he got mad at that and he was angry he was frustrated at his own like you know inability to do anything and also at the fact that rudy is just like having a time of his life while everything else is happening this is from paul's perspective you know and okay that's it and as i said i understand i understand that very much what he is going through why he suddenly snapped at that situation and you know like like obviously like if something like that happened for me as well like you know like I would also probably snap. But the thing that really annoys me here is that for Paul, Rudy is just a kid. Like we know that he's not a kid. Like that's for us, for our information. That's what we know. And we know that yeah, Rudy is capable of doing this. Now for Paul here, um, Rudy is just a kid. Now I, it's really nice to see Paul actually relying on Rudy so much that he just thought that, you know what, let me just put a message he'll read it and he'll be able to understand and all the other stuff he realized that but the thing that really kind of does not sit well with me is that he like you know like rudy is also his kid so it's good that he relies on him that much but wouldn't he at least like you know think that you know what rudy might also be in a dangerous situation just like he said that uh like you know like zenith and like lilia they they might be like you know they might be captured or enslaved something might happen to them shouldn't the same thing happen couldn't the same thing happen to rudy as well didn't he like you know think about that like was his like reliance and was his like what can i say like trust in rudy so much that he didn't even think of this situation and he just thought that you know what like whatever problem rudy might face he'll be able to do anything because he's such a strong little kid and he'll be able to get out of any messed up situation whatever like you know he f like falls into so let me just write a letter and say that you know what rudy like you have gotta help me find your mom and like you know like without even like didn't he think that this might also happen to rudy because as i said like for our information we know rudy is like an adult and he has uh, you know he can think of like you know complicated situation he has better understanding of the world more experience and everything but for paul he's just a kid he's just a normal kid and that's what i'm saying like like i understand that paul really relies on rudy because he also was able to realize that rudy is a little bit different from other kids because he understands a lot more he is a more mature and he is stronger like that's i think that's why he gave like you know like all the you know like he just relied on him so much that he didn't even think about that something might happen to rudy i can i think like that's how paul's thought process went that but the thing that actually kind of does not sit well with me is that 
he's he's also your kid like at least you know like just i don't know like just just say that i'm glad that you're okay like they met there paul is like all messed up and like you know when rudy is so happily saying everything like obviously paul got ticked off because the way rudy was talking about the whole situation but like you know shouldn't he just ask him that are you okay everything was everything all right or something like he's his son. i don't know like as i said like you know like i understand paul's situation but that does not mean that what he did after that was correct like he's relying on a kid and he's expecting a kid to do so much where he can do so little like what did he even expect that rudy would suddenly get the letter and rudy would be like you know what yeah i'm going to find my mom and sister and he would i don't know like magically do something which would like you know helping help him track down track them down and you know like you know save them from some dangerous situation and bring the mom and lilia back with him did he expect that like or what did he expect like i thought that he he like you know he probably like you know the the thing you know what um the main problem here is paul's condition i think if paul was more um you know uh, what can i say calm at that situation if he was not th the condition that we saw like he's all haggard his like you know hair is all like you know grown and his like his drinking and everything drunk at the same time like i think that was the major reason why uh like you know he just suddenly snapped if he was like in a normal condition he probably wouldn't have and i guess like you know the stress of actually being unable to find zenith and lilia for one and a half years probably is another reason like as i said this is a complicated situation but for me i'm on rudy's side you know like as i said like i'm on completely rudy's rudy's side because he he's just a kid he's he's also struggling to get out of the situation that he was in you know like imagine suddenly waking up in the middle of nowhere seeing a spirit sitting beside you and Ares knocked out that's how rudy woke up you know he woke up he saw the spirit sitting in front of him he saw Ares was just knocked out and like imagine like you know being being alone in a completely new environment where you know nothing you're at the other side of the world and you see that there's another person who you need to protect and you don't even know what kind of situation you'll confront be confronted with imagine a situation like that what did paul expect from him you know he's just a kid i don't know but as i said like i'm sure there will be a lot of like you know like like, you know, this episode will have a lot of, uh, like, different opinions about a lot of people. Like, I'm sure, like, you know, everyone who have watched this episode, some will take Paul's side, some will take Rudy's side. I know that. And that's just a matter of opinion and, you know, like, the way people kind of watch, like, you know, their own personality, their own opinion, how they watch this uh, episode and how, what they think about their thought process. Every different people have a different thought process and a different explanation. So I'm sure there will be a lot of people who will actually take Paul's side in this situation. But for me, I'll I'll have to take Rudy's side, most probably. And I think the major thing that's actually influencing my like you know decision of taking Rudy's side is because we've been seeing everything from Rudy's perspective. That's one of the biggest reason I think because we never we don't know what happened to Paul, what he went through. If if they actually showed us what happened to Paul after that, probably they'll like you know like I would probably sympathize with Paul a lot more. But since they never showed us anything, we just see him like this. It's actually a little bit hard to sympathize with him because we don't know what he went through. We know what Rudy went through. You know, that's also another reason why I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm siding with Rudy. But even if they showed us Paul's situation, I probably would still side with Rudy because, as I said, like, you know, like he was also in a similar situation. So, like, you know, he had his hands full with saving himself. Like, we, you guys saw like what he went through, you know. Like one after one situation after the other, like he almost got like you know like captured the whole thing with the smuggling situation, 
<clears throat> you know, like, and a lot of other stuff as well. Like, you know, that, that whole situation in season one where they had to, like, you know, earn money and, you know, like the whole thing with where uh, he let a person die in front of him because he was just so focused on, like, you know, earning money. All these things, like, you know, like a lot of things is going on and Rudy has been going through a lot of things as well. So, like, my, like, you know, my reaction would probably be the same as Ares as soon as you know, Arius got into the room. He's like, what happened? And like, you know, like Rudy was like, I met my dad. And Arius was like, he did something to you, didn't you? I'm going to go kill him. <laughs> you know, and, and then Arius says that, uh, like, why blame Rudy? He has been going through a lot as well. I am of a similar opinion to Arius. Because, as I said, like, you know, like, Rudy has also been going through a lot. It's not just Paul, you know, like, you know what, I think another thing would probably influence a lot of people's decision after watching this. Like, you see how Rudy was just like, you know, laughing and, you know, just how uh, happy, he, like, you know, in a happy way, he was just explaining everything and just like, you know, like in a more positive way, he was explaining everything while Paul was just haggard and just tired, you know. I think this, this change, like, you know, this, this parallel in personality the way they explained this situation and the way they were will also probably influence a lot of people's decision in siding with paul because it really looks paul is just like you know so tired and so like he went through a lot while rudy just looks so happy and everything now here's the thing rudy also went through a lot but the thing here is rudy is able to hide it you know really rudy has this because we know what he went through in the real world, you know, like he he's a victim of bullying. And one thing that I know is that people who are actually victim of bullying are able to contain it, you know, they're able to contain it. They're able to hide everything in front of a smile. That's how like, that's their way of coping up with a situation, you know. And because of that, Rudy always does that. Even if he's going through so many difficult situations, he just smiles and laughs it off and tries to keep it in. Doesn't want anyone else to get involved in it because he thinks that he's, like, you know, involving everyone in his own problems. That's, that's Rudy. And that's why, like, you know, he was all, like, explaining it in this type of a situation. If it was some other kid, he would have probably broken down by this time, you know, he would like, you know, if this was not Rudy, if this was some other kid who got transported and like, you know, and who fell into a similar situation like this, who was just a normal kid, he would have probably been similar to Paul, his situation would be, he wouldn't be like happily talking about this like this. And since Rudy, as I said, he keeps everything in his heart kind of locked in, he kind of shows an act of being happy while, while he is actually not happy. Like, you know, this, this, this situation, like, you know, a lot of people actually sympathize with Paul, but we should also think about a situation like this, that just like how Paul is, Rudy is also like this, but he's just covering it up very well. They're not, he's not letting us see that. And we kind of saw that afterwards when he goes back to his room, you see, he kind of throws up, you know, that really shows how much he's stressed out inside. And he's like, you know, like really, what can I say? And uh, I don't know, like bothered by this. And that shows that all this time Rudy has been kind of covering it up. And, you know, that's why again, like, you know, like I'm, I'm with Rudy this time. Like I understand Paul's situation. I understand why, where he's coming from, why he's so angry. I understand each and everything. And I don't blame him or blame him at all. But I would have to take Rudy's side in this episode. You know, that's, that's just me, I think. <clears throat> and now here's the thing. Another thing that probably, I don't know, um, was another, like, you know, was, was the cause of this situation is because Rudy did not read the letter that Paul sent him. And <clears throat> now, <clears throat> what can I say? Like, it did, like, you know, all the time it did kind of bother me why Rudy never thought that his mom and like, you know, Lilia could also be teleported somewhere else and they might be in trouble as well. It, it kind of bothered me, you know, all this time. But now that I think about it, I think this is also kind of the reason, not, not reason, but I think this is also probably because he, he did not even want to think about it. You know, he did not even want to think about such a thing happening. And like, you know, he probably, 
he probably had a you know like a nagging feeling that yeah something like this might happen but he just kind of shoved it away to keep his own sanity of you know like surviving in a situation like he himself has a lot of own, his own problems he was going through a lot of problems himself like he needs to think about how to go back he needs to think about making money he needs to think about rejet he needs to think about aries all this stuff is going on and like he had a lot of things on his plate so i think like you know he actually kind of did not try to actively think about the situation that something might have also happened to the mom and dad because if he starts thinking about that like you know like he'll go mad completely like so many things to think about and so many concerning situations so i think it was him that actually kind of like you know did not really think about the situation because he did not want to get more like you know uh, what can I say? Like it's just like a survival, like a you know, defense me mechanism or something that his mind automatically did. Like you know, he never thought about it like that because he himself was in a problematic situation in in his in himself. So um, I don't know, but <sighs> yeah, okay. And now uh, this episode here, as we can see, like you know, they go to this new place and. Rejet and Aries, they are off on doing their own stuff. And Rudy, he comes and meets with Paul. So, you know, the, the first person was with all the comedy stuff happening, you know, like Rudy, like, <laughs> like in that situation, like, you know, when he kind of puts on the thing and, like, you know, like this weird way he, like, you know, typical Rudy, we, we, we know what he is. And, that was like i'm kind of like you know not talking about that situation because like that was just comedy in it's like you know as we see in this uh, show and but the main thing that starts is after that where we meet paul and you know like he talks about the situation paul gets mad and you know like all that thing and here's the thing that here's another thing that actually pisses me off um paul listens to rudy like you know now, as I said, like, you know, he, he's pretty stressed out himself, so I don't blame him actually bothering Rudy. But the thing that actually bothered me is like the way he was actually acting so hostile, actively hostile towards Rudy, you know, like, here's the thing. It wouldn't actually bother me if Paul was someone unrelated to Rudy, you know, like if he was just a normal acquaintance of Rudy or a friend of Rudy, the way he can, you know, kind of actively hostile attacked him like he was like you know what like ha oh, you were so ha happy playing hero like you know saving Ares all that stuff like you know he was saying and like you know also kind of uh, I think that's something about Ares as well yeah like you know he was also kind of talking about Ares like you know you're like oh you're like having like a vacation adventuring with a cute girl all that stuff like if he was a mere acquaintance, if he was a mere friend, Paul, you know, I wouldn't say much. I would be like, you know what? He was just stressed out and he's just venting his frustrations. I wouldn't say anything. But he's his damn father. Like, what? Why even talk like this to your own son? I don't get it. You know, as I said, if this was just, if Paul was just Rudy's acquaintance, I would have been like, yeah, he's stressed out and he's just like, you know, like kind of letting everything to go to his head. And that's why he's talking to him. But he's your own damn son like why are you talking to your son in such a hostile manner and just i don't know like you know blaming everything on him like what type of a behavior is this like aren't you even concerned about your own son's safety like this is like you know i think i think that is what actually really bothers me about this whole situation and that's that's probably the reason why i can't talk take paul's side here because i don't like the way he approached the situation it, like you know he kind of made make it feels as if he's the victim and everyone like you know here is the victim and he, he's just making it feel as if like rudy is the bad guy here i don't like that thing you know this whole situation like you know like we see how everything like you know paul's just like you know like hey you're just vacationing like you know and he's saying stuff like this everyone is just looking at them in a weird way all the adventurers here like you know they were looking at him at rudy as if he's like you know like committed some crime or something and like, you know all the whole situation when rudy kind of struck back to him and was beating paul up everyone was looking at him in such disdainful eyes and everything 
that this is the thing that actually bothers me i think yeah i think i I'm, I'm probably able to understand what is actually bothering me in this episode this whole thing of paul actually acting as a victim and making it feel as if like you know rudy is just playing around doing nothing while look at me i'm doing so much things i'm in, like you know I, i'm struggling so much rudy is also struggling you know rudy is also struggling he's just not letting it show that's what rudy is doing and the way he kind of actively host like you know attacks rudy in that manner that really doesn't sound like you know uh, that that that's the thing that actually bothers me and the main thing that actually again like bothers me again is that he's his damn father you know? he's not some like you know an ordinary acquaintance or some i don't know family friend he's not someone like that he's he's his damn father so why why are you putting your son in such a place and like you know just like attacking him like this in front of so many people and acting as if like he he was wrong like you know he's doing something wrong and you know like this this manner of actually behaving with him that's what that that pissed me off i think in this episode yeah and that, like you know like that scene like after seeing that scene I really could not side with Paul at all at least in this episode. I'm I'm full on with Rudy because the way Paul acted here was really weird. And like you know this thing actually really did bother me about Paul before as well. Like you remember in season 1 there was this episode where Paul just like you know just like tells Rudy that ha huh, you're wrong like you know why did you hit that kid you know? Like you should apologize first before talking to elders and all that stuff he was like you know saying. Like that manner this this manner of actually like you know i don't know like that bothers me and at that time like you know like rudy kind of said that yeah i understand paul is a scum paul is a scum i understand that but he's a good scum you know in in his heart he's a good person but like there's a lot of thing that is actually really wrong about paul and i think this episode really showcases that the thing that's that's actually wrong with paul you know I think one thing and one adject adjective that you can probably explain you know like uh, refer to Paul as is I don't know like he he kind of focuses on himself a lot I think that's what it is you know like here as well like you know whatever he thinks is correct is correct according to him and I think that's how he goes like in season 1 as well when like you know when the, when the, the complain about Rudy he didn't even listen to Rudy he just slapped him and said that you're wrong he didn't even listening to him like you know he like and then when Rudy, like, you know, one-upped him and, like, you know, talked back and, like, you know, with pure logic just destroyed him, like, you know, he, he stopped. And, and I think this episode kind of showcases that as well. Because here again, he, like, he just goes at Rudy from the beginning. As soon as he hears that Rudy's having fun and, like, you know, he's coming, trying to come back and he's, like, in such a happy, positive mood. He just goes mad and just starts attacking Rudy and, and that's what actually I don't like about this like you know about Paul in this episode and again as I said you know like I understand where Paul is coming from I understand why he's so stressed out I understand everything and I don't blame him but I'll have to take Rudy's side here in this episode you know like if I had to take a side I'll have to take Rudy's side because I cannot sympathize with Paul at all you know like after the thing that he did you know suddenly attacking rudy like this verbally attacked you know and you know and wait a minute who attacked uh, just a sec let me check something okay and after that obviously like you know like uh, after the whole situation where he uh, kind of attacks rudy in like you know in a verbal way Mm, Rudy also kind of starts going overboard after that and that after that like you know like that's that's one thing that Rudy shouldn't have done uh you know like he kind of says that oh that girl who's that girl does mom and Lilia knows blah 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 but I, I can kind of understand here because Rudy didn't didn't know that Lilia and Zenith is more not with him and that probably ticked Paul off so much you know suddenly seeing Rudy kind of like you know talking to him that way but you know like that was after Paul attacked him about Eris and all like and Ruijet you know after Paul attacked verbally Rudy about uh, Ruijet and Eris he he countered back like this and 
again like you know, at that moment i think rudy kind of went a little overboard suddenly like that but you know like he he got mad at that situation and yeah i i i can't blame him as well and then we see norn here for the first time and obviously like lorn got mad at rudy because he he comes in and sees like someone beating up his dad and i don't think norn even realized that that's his brother yeah i think so so you know and then they go get all this damn i've been talking quite a long about this episode like this episode really kind of bothered me about the whole paul situation i i really don't like you know like like the way he actually handled the situation paul at least like he's, he's supposed to be an adult like like calm down dude like you found your son after so long and you the, the thing that you kind of say like this is just verbally attacking from not for nothing like oh my god <laughs> and yeah and then like you know in the last scene we see eris and rudy and here we can see like you know after that like how rudy actually got affected by everything like, you know, and, and everything kind of crashed down on him he realized that what paul was saying is actually correct like you know zenith and lilia is nowhere to be found like where the hell are they like how in which condition are they like, you know, are they even alive like all the situations kind of suddenly came into his head and he just like you know broke down at that moment and just he comes back and another thing that is also bothering him is that he did nothing about it you know the way paul actually blamed him for that situation that's also kind of bothering him again and he he feels as if everything is his own fault now and like and rudy as i said rudy is a victim of bullying so you know like his personality is like this like and if someone actually blames him for something he'll actually think a lot about it and actually like you know blame himself more because you know like since he's a victim of bullying like he 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 keeps he he looks at people he kind of studies them observes them kind of tries to like you know uh, analyze them and then talk to them in a way where he like you know he tries to be nice to people that's what rudy is you know like like you guys must have noticed that as well he rudy all the time actively tries to act nice with each and every people that he meets with you know and because he does not want to be hated because like you know since in his real world he had to be like this to like you know because he was being bullied he always had to observe people see them look at them and always try to he always had to try to uh, find a way to actually not anger them because again he'd get beaten up by them and you know like he also is very much like you know blames himself for a lot of things as well so being his personality being like this the whole shenanigan that happened with paul here it affected him in a lot more bigger way than we can ever imagine it to be like we're just sitting here like looking at rudy but the things that happening inside rudy after he came back to his room is immense like he just threw up at that moment and it's just immense and thankfully Rijit and Ace is with him and you know like again he's also a single person like you know he's also kind of a kid even though in inside he's an adult you know he's all alone here like imagine like you know you finding your father after so long you know uh, after like one and a half year just wandering around here and there and then suddenly you meet your father and your father blames you that you didn't try to find your mom and sister uh, and Lilia, sorry, not sister. So imagine that situation. That's what happened here. He finds his dad. He's like, yeah, finally a family member. I can talk to him. And you know, like, and then suddenly he starts blaming you about stuff and starts verbally attacking you. As I said, again, I don't blame Paul, but I'll take Rudy's side in this episode. So that's it. So that was this episode. Uh, I'm quite interested in seeing, hearing your guys' opinion, what you thought about it. As I said, this is just my opinion. I'm fully with Rudy this time. I'm fully with Rudy. I, I cannot actually, like, as I said, the, the reasons I explained, I, that's why I don't actually kind of condone the way Paul acted here. And I'm fully on Rudy's side. So I'm quite interested in hearing your guys' opinion. If there's actually someone who takes Paul's side, I'll be, I'd love to actually hear, you know, the way you thought about the situation. And, you know, like, so be sure to comment down below about that. Because this episode, I, I'm sure about it. This episode would have like a 
like a 50 50 thing like where a lot of people will take Paul's side where a lot of people will take rudy's side and i'm on the rudy faction <laughs> so yeah so that's it so thank you guys for watching this was my reaction to mushoku tensei season 2 episode number five this was a fantastic episode like you know like we didn't have much fighting and stuff you know there's no cool things happening but it was just so amazing in a more emotional you know packed way i have to say so it was just great so that's it so thank you guys for watching if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know i'll check them out that's it so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next week with another episode of mushoku tensei season 2 until then goodbye and have a nice day